So, our mates, Harry and Tyler, lost in Copenhagen. Now they'd beaten the Americans, they had beaten the Norwegians. And as realized for a story set in Denmark, there's not a whole lot of Danish people in this story. Because now, they were log logical guys. They had two drinking contests, and they felt... We should be feeling pretty fucked up right now. But they didn't. Nope. So. They moved on. Now passing an alley. They saw the flag of Greenland. Waving proudly. They, we're in Denmark. Why is the flag of Greenland there? Turned out to be some kind of Greenland national holiday. Hell yes, they thought, we're gonna party. So they stepped into the locale. And were quite surprised to see it. Guys, we're the only two white guys here. Hmm. Why is that? Harry asked. Tyler didn't know. He said he would investigate. So Harry goes to the bar, orders himself a brew, and has, by all accounts, a quite nice time. Until Her Tyler hurriedly grabs him by the shoulder, turns him around and says, We gotta go! Why? No time! Go, 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 go! And what follows is a Benny Hill-esque hunt amongst the alleys of Copenhagen, where angry people hunt these guys. But they manage to lose them. And, understandably, Harry asks his friend, Tyler, what was that all about? Now, Tyler explained he wanted to know why there were so many dark people in Greenland. And he started the conversation with, why are you all black? And kind of went downhill from there. Now, to take their mind from this, they started to challenge each other. You know, stupid shit. I bet you can climb that light pole or whatever. Now, Harry, always the ladies' man, he bet his friend that I can kiss the next beautiful woman walking past us. Okay, Tyler said, go for it. A beautiful woman comes. She has a man with her, a companion. Harry does not notice him because Harry is drunk. So, and this is word for word from their letter to me. Harry walks up to her and shouts in his most pathetic tone, Hey! and hugs her. Now, Usually, that recounts in a slap or a sexual harassment suit. Luckily for Harry, it did not this time. He gets his hug. Now, Harry explains that he thinks she's pretty and would like to kiss her. Something she's not 100% aboard with. Now, Harry decides to, well, fair is fair, about to say goodbye. When the lady in question gives him an out, or an in as it were. You can kiss me, if you kiss him. And now, here's where Tyler just tried to pick up his belongings and see ya and move on. But no, no, no. Harry steps forward to the guy and lays one on him. But what Harry thought was gonna be a peck on the lips turns into a full-size snog 
<laughs> and at this time Tyler is on the Danish ground laughing his ass off. <laughs> but the lady keeps her word. She gives Harry a good snog, but no more than she had, she promised. <laughs> and the, the couple takes their leave and Tyler, still laughing, tries to explain the situation to Harry. Now, Harry focused on getting this kiss from the girl. He didn't follow all of the conversation. So Tyler tells him that the guy was gay. That's why he was so into the kiss. And the girl also gay, which was explain why she was not. <laughs> uh. Now, Harry is quite upset over this turn of events, of course. So, what do you do to take your mind off it? Strip club. Now, 250 krona was what the fast, fat man asked as an entry fee. In Danish, it didn't sound that much. And of course, they had the magic card. Now, once inside, they find they are the only customers. Which means all 10 of the women working goes to their table. They each get a girl on the lap. They watch a nudie dance. And when the girls want to drag them backstage for a private show, uh, Harry and Tyler has had enough and sneak out. And apparently, strippers can become quite angry. Their shrieks follow the boys through the night. Strike out again. Now, a few boring pops later, it was time for some cigarettes and food. So, while Harry gets some supplies, Tyler involves himself in the drunken drama of Copenhagen. As Harry emerges with the food, he sees Tyler talking to a crying drunk woman whose boyfriend apparently cheated on her. And as the man they talk about comes around the corner, Tyler and Harry wants to beat the hell out of him. The woman says no, grabs the guy, and walks off arm in arm. Now the boys, they take a few moments and try to understand the logic of this. They can't. So, realizing now that it's quite late and their meeting, the very reason they were on this trip is just a couple of hours away, they decide to get home. They don't know where it is, so what follows is a running field. They run through the streets, the alleys of Copenhagen until they see that sign with the hotel name and gives a victorious, victorious share. This share, however, catches the attentions of the working girls at the gentlemen's club next to their hotel. Lightning fast, they take the claws into the boys, hands on crutches. And when Tyler feels his hand being drawn to a pair of chlamydia smelling panties, he breaks free. Harry does likewise, and they leg it for the entrance to the hotel. And quite a fight erupts. Who should shower first? Well... So, more dead than alive, they make the meeting. They catch the train going home. The train has to stop in the city of Lund, where Harry and Tyler has to get off the train and spend the night. Well, 
that's another story, isn't it? Next Monday, they sit in their boss's office and gets told the bill for their night in Copenhagen. 23,000 Swedish crowns. What the boss asks. Did you have fun? <laughs> Glorious boss. Great boss. So, match is over. The boys winning by the slimmest of margins. Proving once again that the gods hold their hands over fools, children, and above all, drunks. <sighs> See ya!